Hello everyone, The Andrada here, and welcome to episode 19 of our Enigmatica 6 Let's Play, uh, where today we are going to work on um, power. Power has been our limiting factor for getting our flux core and flux network system set up other than ender pearls, but ender pearls is always a problem that we will need to solve at some point. Um, still trying to figure out how we're going to do that, but at least we can get the foundation set up for uh, flux networks so that we can, you know, at least do something. Um, at least that way it's ready to go. So when we can dive into it, it's ready immediately. We just boop, 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 get it and go. So flux networks, flux networks is going to require us to get these flux cores and these flux cores require an ender core from power. The only place to get them is from power. And yeah, in order to get them, we need eye vendors, dielectric casings, basic capacitors, and we have to energize them using power into an ender core. And of course, Eye of Ender is an Ender Pearl Blaze Powder, or apparently Ender Pearls, Amber Gen, and Crystal Shards. Either way, though, it requires an Ender Pearl, which we don't have. But again, we'll figure that out soon. Uh, soon, TM trade. So let's get into power. So first off, uh, we have a quest book to follow. We have an actual quest book, a manual on this as well as the quests themselves in uh, quest book from Enigmatica. So let's pop into the power. Oh, I'm already here and see what we got going on. Okay, now you're playing with power. Welcome to power. In this chapter, you will learn all about one of Minecraft's newest power generation, storage and transportation mods. It will cover most of what the mod has to offer from the very basics of power generation to multi-block reactors and wireless power. It has wireless power built into it, interesting. Beside this quest line, your best friend when navigating the mod is the power manual. Feel free to consult it every time you find yourself lost or looking for new information. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Merlot. And from that, we get ourselves a wrench. Speaking of wrench, Morpho Tool. The Morpho Tool is in this pack, and I've actually never used this before. I'm interested to see, do I have the ability to make green dye? Do I have green dye? I have green dye. The Morpho tool is supposed to be able to be crafted with any wrench and it adds it to the Morpho tool. So you just have to have one wrench and whenever you look at a machine, it will switch to it. I'm curious to see how this is gonna work. I'm curious to see if it will work. So let's pop down here into our basement and see um, what options we have with this Morpho tool. Real quick, slight deviation from our plan, but um, well, actually we have our thermal stuff over here. So when I look at this, hey look, it changed. And you look away, it changes back. And if we look at this, there's our configurator, crescent wrench, configurator, and you only need one tool around with you. And from what I understand, it's not like a emulation of that tool or a, I don't know, I don't know what else it could be, but it is actually changes to that tool. So you can use it to, I can rotate this machine if I want to, um, or shift click to pick it up, which is pretty handy actually. One tool does it all. I like it. Anyway, that deviation aside, power. So we got our wrench for power, and now we need to get into our basic resources. Dielectric, all the things. Before we get into various cool blocks and items power offers, let's familiarize ourselves with some of the basic resources the mod will ask you to craft. Dielectric paste is needed for most basic crafting components, so get used to seeing a lot. Automate it or have a blaze farm. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, was not intended for me to set up a blaze farm for this, but it works. We have one. Um, yeah, have a blaze farm. You can immediately see how it's used to make some of their basic components. Yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. So blaze farm, uh, we need blaze rods or we need blaze dust, blaze powder. Yeah, this stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So let's see what the best way to get this. So we can crush it or well, one to two, or we can put it into a, oh, we, there's no mechanism crusher. The pulverizer gets us three. Hang on, no. What I want is this. There we go. Um, 
pulverizer gets us three. Still no crusher recipe, huh? For mechanism. Interesting. So the pulverizer is going to be our best bet, it looks like, to get uh, the max out of this. Just cycle through these just to see. Uh, the immersive engineering crusher can get us four, but I ain't about building that. Natural altar infusion. Pedestals crusher upgrade can get us three. But yeah, it looks like the pulverizer is going to be the best bet. Um, now, I don't have a pulverizer downstairs to automate. Really, this setup is completely pointless now, though. Uh, no longer necessary, so we could just... Uh, bring that downstairs with us and set it up somewhere let's do that shall we that way we can have it downstairs ready to be automated Boop, grab that how do we want to put this guy because he's going to be kind of a standalone machine but this is kind of our automation area um hey you're supposed to switch back to a standard tool there you go hmm now oh, we're going to run out of storage too. Um, let's see, are we going to need more? We have our smelting, our crusher. I say for now, it's fine. So let's go back here. Let's give this guy power. That is a logistical transporter, so we can set that up as well. So we're going to have this guy, the bottom is going to be an output. So we're going to clear the rest. The top is going to be an input. Uh, that is there in there. Okay. So let's get a logistical transporter here. And we need another XNet connector because why not just have it tap into that system? Uh, connector. Red connector. Make. Good. That way, if ever we need to do any, uh, auto crafting we can uh, so this is going to be what direction am I facing here no f3 we are facing east so let's turn off the east and then you uh, are in configurate so nothing good 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 uh, f3 off so then we need to get uh, to the controller. And from this guy, we are going to extract. Oh, and we also need to insert power. Uh, where is our insert power? Oh, I'm sorry. That was our power. This is our extract. Okay. We need to put a block there. We're gonna need a crafter. I had an iron crafter. Do I? No, I just need a regular crafter. I don't need an iron crafter for this. Where I do need another iron crafter, though, is going to be here because that I think only has like four slots left. Uh, crafter is cooked. Let's pop down here. Bam. Fill that back in. And we have a pulverizer set up. So if I get back up top. And we create a crafting card for blaze powder in a pulverizer. Uh, no flint. And no sulfur. It's a secondary output. If it shows up, it shows up. Great. It'll get pulled out. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, and we're going to come down here. And I, I came down here to watch this. That's why I didn't just use my crafting manager. Uh, so if we go here and we say blaze powder and say we need, let's just say we need one. We should see it dump the blaze rod in here. We're going to want to give this some upgrades. And then auto output. Yeah, you should have output there, right? Auto output enabled. 
Can I set it up on the uh... connector, right? I did say, tell it to extract. God, this is such a mess back here. What are you extracting, actually? No, you don't even need to be on here. Uh, remove. Insert into the interface. I thought that the... Uh, Does that logistical transporter need to be on pull mode for it to insert into there? Or what if I just set the back to output? Still not wanting to go. From this guy, oh, because I didn't set that to an extract. Okay, if we extract from the back now, does that work? That worked. So I guess this was unnecessary. I'm going to be honest, I don't remember why I had this here in the first place. But it's unnecessary now. Uh, okay, cool. We now have a pulverizer automated with for blaze rods. So let's get up here and teach our machine how to make more stuff. Uh, first off, patterns. We're going to need more. Let's just go ahead and craft another... Uh, cancel that. Let's craft another 32 of those. Do I have enough stuff for this? Yes, good. Let's get our crafters going and get our dielectric paste. So let's go here and power. We can put those away now. Then we need to go to our crafting manager, or our pattern machine, pattern grid. There we go. So not power, power. So, dielectric paste is what it said that we need. These are all of the things that power can do. Generators, dischargers, thermo generators, energizing rods, furninators, fur, furninators. Uh, but all of it is going to depend on us having dielectric paste, apparently. So that's going to be some coal, some clay, and some blaze powder. That's going to make us 16 of those. Or if you do it with a bucket of lava, it makes you 24. Um, but we don't have lava anywhere. So this is going to be the easiest way for us to dive into this. Um, dielectric rods are going to be dielectric paste and iron bars. So we're going to need to know how to make that. We're probably going to need to know how to make iron bars too. So let's teach that. You can also turn the dielectric rod, which is going to be that. Um, dielectric casing is going to be those. Let's teach that. Seems like it's going to be important. And... Does that look to be about it for our component pieces here? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So let's pop down here to our iron crafter. Put all these things in here. And see what our quest book says to do next. So it wants us to make a dielectric casing. So let's go ahead and do that. Dielectric casing. Craft. So it's going to make all the stuff that we need which should be pretty quick because we had the blaze powder ready to go and dielectric casing. And it's going to give us two more of those. Sweet. Uh, so immediately, so you have generators and you have energy cables, which we knew we had energy cables because we had, um, we had already been given some. So actually, if we take these out, it should complete that quest for us, which is a little bit cheating, but eh, I mean, is it really? We could make some if we need to. And we got a power loot box, which gave us more dielectric casings, which from what I understand, that's gonna be pretty nice to have. So that's that. Um, so our next step, we can get into f the Ferninator and make solar panels um, and lens of ender. Is this our nifty upgrade for any power solar panel? Just right clicking it, we're going to generate energy even without direct access to the sky. Solar panels passively generate forge energy now the question is stored mix extract 150 rf a tick oh that's actually not bad generates 120 rf a tick it has to be sunlight though that's a possibility for us to get into these though 620 rf a tick that's a blazing uh 
I love solar panels. I do like solar panels. I love passive energy. Like, you don't have to do anything because it's passive. That is something I'm going to add to... Uh, So it starts with the basic. We're going to add that to our to-do list. We may end up actually getting into that. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, we don't need the Furninator because we have our own power gen. And we don't need the energy cell because we have the um, mechanism energy cell. The ender gate or small convenient component variants for ender cells. They can be placed on a power energy cable and they will occupy one block space. You won't be able to upgrade your channels from any ender gate. So you'll always need to keep at least one ender cell somewhere. What is an ender cell? Ender cells are power's way to transfer power wirelessly and are one of the mod's best features. Using them isn't too intuitive at first, but gets easy once you understand them. You have a number of channels. More channels unlock with higher tiers, which by default store zero. We'll read this later. We don't need to get into ender cells yet because uh, we're trying to get into flux networks. We wouldn't even need to deal with that if we got into flux networks. So this is where we're at. We need an energizing orb and we need energizing rods of any tier. So let's work on those things because that is what we are doing right now. I keep getting distracted, my ADHD making me look at something else and I'm like, oh, shiny. And we'll start trying to work on those when we don't need to. So let's get ourselves this guy, which is the energizing orb. He's almost done. And then energizing rod. That's a block of quartz. Uh, we don't know how to make a block of quartz. Should we deviate just a hair? Compacting drawer. So we can make quartz. No, we are not going to deviate. We're just going to do it as a standard recipe. It is on my to-do list, though. Note, compacting drawers on my to-do list, as well as standard storage drawers. Uh, we are going to do that. Next episode of the episode after, we are getting this set up with compacting drawers so that we don't have to worry about making all these little integral components in it's I don't know it's not that it's even less efficient it's just I don't like wasting I mean you're wasting a pattern essentially by saying to create a quartz block you do this when the drawer can do it itself so that makes that on our to-do list don't let me forget okay so then we need our energizing rods um, and we don't know how to make these capacitors so to make a capacitor you need to teach the system how to do that I knew there was going to be more we need to learn. I thought that was too easy. Five little recipes and that was all we needed. And we don't have a block of redstone because we never taught the system how to make redstone blocks. Okay. Again, compacting drawers in our near future. But for now, just to get this done. However, wherever we end up here, next episode, we're doing compacting drawers. That's what I say. Um, I need a total of what? Three of these? And we're missing energy cables, but don't I have energy cables? Do they have NBT data? And that's why it's not working. I think you need four of these. They don't stack either. Um, let's go with the capacitors. So we need two more of those. And then the quartz blocks, we can put that there. Uh, and the recipe for this is this. Energy cable. Yeah, these must have NBT data. That's why it's not wanting to work. Okay, let's see what our quest says now. Oh. You make two, it gave us two. Oh, uh, man. Oh, and these are filling up with energy from our capacitor. That's fine. So what do we do with these things now? Start crafting, place down the orb, and then surround it by placing some rods close by connected to power. The rods will now start charging up the orb faster depending on the rods tier and how many you have. If we look at our book and we go to our functional blocks, energizing, it shows a great picture. You got your thing, your rods set up and that there. Um, the amount of rods in the tier. Oh, so actually four is not the minimum or the maximum. We can grab more. We can set up six. 
So let's set this up. Let's say we set this up here. We just need to get power from somewhere over to there. Or over to here. But for now, we can pop this here. Ooh, fancy. And get some basic logistical cable, or no, uh, universal cables. That's all I have. Wow, I'm gonna need to get more of those. Uh, so how many of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it's ugly. I'm gonna wanna make another one of those and get seven, but for now. And that goes there. That goes there, 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 and there. And then we need to give these power. So this is going to go there, and then we'll just... This is going to get run outside. It's going to get real ugly. We need more universal cables too, by the way. I do not think I taught the system how to make those, did I? Basic universal cables. Let's go with at mechanism basic. That's the universal cable, the mechanical pipes, the pressurized tubes, the rest of our patterns, back to where we were, and logistical transfer. Oh, thermodynamic conductor. That's new. I can transfer heat. All right. Did not know that was a thing. I know mechanism has a heat generator, but I didn't know that you could transfer heat using thermodynamic conductors. And then our universal cable. Let's just grab a stack of those. I have enough for that? Yes. And I actually had everything on hand, so that's great. All right, let's pop outside and run this power very ugly. Oh man, this is power generation. <laughs> I need power output. This is why we're trying to get into flux networks. This would be a non-issue because this has to go up and over like that. And then all of these need disconnected, uh, not rotate. there. I'm really good at making ugly wiring runs, aren't I? Everybody makes fun of Direwolf for making ugly runs, but my goodness, it is not easy sometimes. If this, I mean, if it was Ender IO, it would be a little bit better because you can kind of, you know, run them all in one block space, but goodness gracious, without being able to do that, it's hard. Really, I should have ran this down so I didn't have to see this, but whatever. So this is our energizing setup. And just because I am OCD and I want um, this to look as it sh like perfect, we're gonna grab one more. And we're gonna have seven. Bam. Okay, now what? Let's look at our quests. So we got that going. Uh, so it wants us to make uranite, uran ur uraninite, not urinite, uraninite. Seeing all the basic means, power has to generate FE. Now it's time to step it up and get to the big boys. Let's make a reactor. Not so fast, though. You're going to need some fuel. Okay, well, we're not ready for that yet. I see. But we can actually, we can try it just to demonstrate our setup. So if we put one uranium in here, we'll just put one, two, three, four, five, six uranium and get six uraninite. So we have uranium. So what do I do? Just put that in there and look. They beam into this guy, and we get uraninite. We're going to finish the quest off just because it was there. And I imagine we can automate the input of this with like a hopper. Let's find out. Hopper. This is good knowledge to know if y'all are following along and you want to know, can we automate this? Let's put a hopper on top. 
and I say, okay, so what was it? Six. So I need one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can. And you can probably put a hopper on the bottom to pull that out. So there you go. If you needed to, you can hopper this. I don't know what I just made or why I did it, but we did it. Because the quest said to. Because it gave us blocks of uranite. And then you have a reactor. Reactors are power's best way of energy generation and require a big multi-block with more advanced maintenance. Simply make 36 reactor blocks of any tier, all of the same tier, and place one on the ground to automatically build the 3x4 structure. Since the reactor is fairly complex and there would not be enough space to accurately describe, read the manual. RTFM. You can learn all about how to make how to make it work there. Happy powering. The FE partic values displayed in GDI are only the baseline. These reactors are heavily influenced by the auxiliary materials added to them, such as carbon and redstone. Liquid and solid coolants also play an important role in fuel efficiency. So basically, you make a reactor, you put stuff in there, and it uh, makes energy. But that's not what we're working on. We don't need to worry about that. We just needed to get this set up, set up, so that we can get the flux network stuff going. Um, and that's where we're at with this. Because that was all it took. It honestly was not that bad. I thought it was going to take much more to get into. Um, but it did not. These solar panels are interesting. Now the question with these solar panels is, so I have to set them up, and then I'm going to have to run cables to them, aren't I? In order to extract the power from them. Is that a fair assumption? I mean, that would make sense. They're not going to wirelessly uh, transfer. Yep. Solar panels and FE generator that generates energy when exposed to sunlight. High tiers generates more FE. Any block that will stop light above the solar panel will stop its production. Uh, your starter one, which we can't make. We're on the basic one. Holds 30,000, generates 220. Holds 40, generates 320. And we can get up to the nitro tier, which generates 720 RF a tick. Which, for passive energy generation, is not that bad. And from what the book says, you can make Lens of Ender, which um, use a photoelectric pane on an Enderman or Endermite, which makes it so that they can be, it doesn't have to have direct access to the sky. The only caveat is it needs daytime at all times. So at nighttime, you're not going to have any power gen. But that's okay. I like coming up on my base here and looking out over the savannah, just because it's so beautiful looking. Um... Yeah, so that was basically the start of power. We will probably get into these solar panels once we get into flux networks. Because I do not want to be running cables all up my base on the roof and then all down to everything down here. That would be, uh, I don't think that would be very wise. One thing I want to know. Um, at mechanism uh, universal cable. You can upgrade these using an infused alloy, correct? From what I was reading, you can infused alloy. Like, let's just get, let's just, you know, whatever. I don't care. Let's just get a few of these. I want to see from, I was reading, you can upgrade mechanisms cables in place without having to, because this is pretty cheap. Let's just take some iron. You can just, Oh, you can. You can just upgrade them in place just by clicking on this. Wow, that is convenient. So you don't even have to... Oh, and does it... Like, if I do that, did it upgrade everything in this chain? It did. Well, not everything, but as much as it could. Oh. Well, we're going to do that. We're going to upgrade all of our cabling to the advanced tier of universal cables, uh, mainly because if you look here um, at mechanism universal, the basic can transfer was well, 3,200 uh, 3.2 K energy transfer. This can do 51 K and it does it faster. Um, not that you necessarily need super fast, but it can hold more, which is great for the buffer and it can transfer more. So yeah, let's grab those infused alloys and, and that is also very uh, awesome that you don't have to uh, sit there and click
click, 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 click. Each set, you can just click one and it'll feed all the way down to every pipe that needs upgraded. So really, if I do this, that should do, yep, we capped out at 57. So then if I go downstairs, we should see that is now red, yes. And if we go here, we can do this. And those are done. How nice is that? Look at that, all upgraded to the next tier. Did that mess this up? Nope, that maintained. Could even do it to our resin to these mechanical pipes to make them have a larger buffer. But this thing again, this thing is back stuffing, so not that concerned about it. I need something to teleport through walls. That would be very, uh, very much, very much liked. Sure, let's just upgrade those, make those even faster too. Why not? We're here. It doesn't hurt. The ultimates are the best, of course. They in pretty much instantly transfer, and we'll do that too, so it can pull out of that chest faster. Uh, another thing on our to-do list, we need to make another 16K storage disk, so I added that. Um, but yeah, so that was power. Let's see how our roses are doing. Wow, we have a lot of roses. We have a lot of black dye. Um, you can, you can, you can, you can come out. Get out. Get. Get. We don't need that much black dye. <laughs> that is a little bit of overkill. Uh, so let's put that away. I don't know what else we want to pop in here that we're going to need some passive growth on. Um, but we have plenty of black roses for now. But yeah, that's it for this episode. Uh, we got our power set up so that we have a basic power orb system so we can infuse things and get that going. Uh, and next episode, we're going to get into the storage drawers and the compacting drawers because I said we would, and I'm tired of having to create these crafting cards that are pointless, just turning things into blocks when I can have one block do all of that for me. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.